now, NBC3 Sports, awarded Best Sportscast by the New York State Broadcasters Association. It's our first look at the 2015 Syracuse Orange on the practice field tonight. Good evening. I'm Nico Tamuri and Coach Schaefer's Bunch officially started practicing yesterday in a session that was closed to the media, but the Orange hard at work today on the road to redemption here in 2015. As you practicing full board, they wrapped up around 7 o'clock. Terrell Hunt, the unquestioned leader of the squad, looks to be in a terrific shape. Number 10 right there, the starting quarterback. He'll need help from the supporting cast, which does feature plenty of returning talent. The defense lost several of its leaders, but as Coach Schaefer always says, next man up. It's a new year, new playmakers on both sides of the ball, and the Orange is ready to make history of its dismal 2014 campaign. In order to do that, the Orange is taking things one game at a time. I think coming off spring ball, the, uh, the upperclassmen um, have taken it to the next level as far as starting fast and, and uh, you know, their preparation throughout the course of the summer was good. And uh, you could see that show up both uh, day one and day two. And then you have the freshmen trying to catch up. Um, good group of freshmen, but, um, you know, it's so hard to tell what they're going to be like till you get them in the pads and you start the contact. But for the most part, uh, about what I was hoping for and, and what I was expecting, uh, uh, once again, just looking forward to getting in the in the pads. A tough loss for the football team made public tonight. Top-notch safety Marquise Blair did not qualify with the NCAA's academic standards. It's very possible Blair would have seen significant action this year as a true freshman. At the end of the day, the uh, you know it just came up short with the NCAA. You know, in the kids' defense. Um, he did everything asked of the school. Um, he made the grades. Um, I think they just had some questions with the high school with a couple courses and the way they were uh, the way they were handled. Um, uh, you know, Wooster High School in Ohio is a very good school, highly academic school. Um, so um, for me, it was a little frustrating, but it's outside of my uh, control. On the flip side, some pretty cool news to report from camp tonight. Kicker Cole Murphy making the field goal right there, along with tight end Cameron McPherson, the grandson of the legendary coach Mac. No further introduction needed there. Along with Donnie Foster, all awarded scholarships by Coach Schaefer. The trio were previously walk-ons, trying out for the team and making it while paying their way through school. Of course, now their hard work on the field and in the classroom earns them a scholarship for the upcoming season. A quick look now at what's ahead in training camp. Saturday, always a great time. Fan Fest on the practice field beyond Manly Fieldhouse. A chance for fans to watch the entire practice session, even meet with players and coaches too. That runs from 3 until 8.30. A week from tomorrow, the Orange heading north on I-81. It's annual week at Fort Drum. As Coach Schaefer puts it, a chance to learn skills from the best military in the world. Can't argue with that assessment. This is all in preparation for the season opener three weeks from Friday against Rhode Island. The day after that Rhode Island game, it will be one to remember. No official announcement made just yet, but you saw the sign right there. It speaks for itself. This is the future Plaza 44 to honor Jim Brown, Ernie Davis, and Floyd Little. It appears it will be unveiled, according to the sign right there, on Saturday, September 5th. We'll look forward to that. 